Don't put that in the video. I'm gonna get murdered in the comments. It's 2023, and if you've been on the internet or you're a gamer at all, you've suddenly realized that NVIDIA has been scamming us for years. There's just no VRAM on any of their cards. But you know who has VRAM? AMD and Intel, but those don't exist. The big thing with AMD is that we always go, no, just buy NVIDIA. It's got DLSS and broadcast and stable drivers and all this other stuff that, you know, do you need that? But nobody talks about what AMD has to bring to the table. And now suddenly, as we realize that eight gigs of VRAM is suddenly not enough for Resident Evil 4 or, you know, a very optimized title like Star Wars, AMD is looking a lot more attractive with, I think, a $400 entry point now for 16 gigs of VRAM or something crazy like that. So let's go ahead and look at some of the features that you can actually use with a current AMD GPU. I'm currently using a 6900 XT and it's got similar features to the new 7000 series, although there might be a thing or two built into the hardware that I don't have access to. But for the most part, if you have one of these cards, you'll have these features. Anything below 5000 or older, it's hit or miss. Quite a few of these features will run on older cards, but I don't really want to get the whole cork board and the string and everything to figure out what GPU AMD supports for this particular feature and who they decided to give drivers to. I mean, as a quick example, I think they're giving the Fury X support for their machine learning software on Windows soon, but nothing else except for that. 6500 I think or something and a 6900 it, it's ridiculous why Fiji a anyways moving on so then let's go ahead and show you the adrenaline software I'm running Windows 11 should be the same on Windows 10 if you're on Linux I'm sorry it's built into the the drivers are built into the kernel and I don't know how anything works there anymore anyways so you're on your computer you've got your stuff installed and you can either just launch it from a desktop shortcut like a weirdo who puts their driver software on a shortcut just right click on the desktop and go to AMD software, Adrenaline Edition. I have an AMD graphics card and that doesn't show up. Well, install your drivers from the AMD website <laughs> or get a card that isn't from 1987 or whatever. No, you don't have any old AMD cards up here, do you? Yeah. <laughs> We're AMD posting now, boys. AMD. AMD. Oh yeah, hey, look at that. <laughs> do you have stable? anything sad rdna1 crashes the desktop noises anyways so here's the home screen for the adrenaline software you've got your little shortcuts here and there about your recently played game your average frame rate which is wrong it's a lot of times it's artificially high because it'll count your menus where you're getting 9 million fps and it's like yeah your average frame rate is 6,000. no it's not stop but you got your quick little shortcuts here what version of the driver you're running and if you can update but we're going to go through the features a little more in depth than that. First off, let's go ahead and just click on the little cog here to look at all of your system wide settings. And you can go ahead and just report issues, which they'll ignore probably. See your hardware stuff, go and shop, whatever. But let's talk about the features here. You got your global graphics settings, which again, all of your stuff will run off of. You can go and set per game settings, which is something you can do in NVIDIA as well with their software, but it's a separate program. The GeForce experience enjoy signing in for no reason. So yeah, I, yeah, I can just click on a title and be like, yeah, for Call of Duty, I want you to do uh, no free sync because I don't like anything. Why would you do that? So back to global settings, you have your uh, default profiles, which I don't touch. I do everything manually because I'm a control freak. You've got your Radeon Super Resolution. Now this is a cool feature that I didn't know about until I just plugged this card in like an hour ago. I mean, if you read the tooltip, it kind of explains it, but what it really does is it gives you FSR, which is that upscaling stuff that isn't as good as DLSS, but runs on everything, more or less, for everything, according to it. Um, but again, if your game natively supports FSR, use that and not this. It, 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 built in is gonna be better, but. You never know what old games you're playing and you can adjust the sharpening. You got your Radeon anti-lag. I think Nvidia does that too, where I think it's called reflex for them, where it just tries to lower your, uh, your input latency. Radeon chill, which is a uh, pretty cool feature since everyone cries about power consumption for their cards. It'll go ahead and automatically throttle your card to meet a certain frame rate target that you set. And you, know, you can set like your, when you're just idling, what your frame rate will be at too. Cause you don't need again, 144 Hertz to, uh, Stare at a wall. You got your Radeon Boost, which is supposed to lower your res while you're running around, because uh, you're not gonna notice. I don't know if I would ever turn that on. I definitely won't on this card, but cool. Image sharpening, uh, a V-Sync knockoff. You got your advanced settings where you can set what your target is for your frame rate, your buffering, your 
aliasing, all that nonsense, which everybody has. But again, the cool features are the Radeon Chill, your super resolution, and the anti-lag, which again, I haven't really played with before. I don't, I just turn it on. I'm not good at CSGO, sorry. So in display options, you've got virtual super resolution, not to be confused with in graphics, Radeon super resolution, RSR and VSR, two different things, two terrible names, which lets you run your game at a uh, higher than native resolution, and then it'll kind of downscale it so your game looks a little crisper. It's great for older titles that have bad anti-aliasing, or if you're trying to benchmark stuff at 4K when you're you know, cheap with a 1080p monitor like I am. Your scaling settings, you know, this is all basic nonsense that everybody more or less gets. You can set your custom resolutions if you wanna overclock an old um, monitor like I do all the time, because it's cool. Now here's a cool thing that Nvidia has kind of lorded over AMD for a couple years now, which is, you know, Nvidia Broadcast or what was it called? RTX Voice, where it kind of filters out all the background noise of your neighbor with a chainsaw right behind you while you're in a Discord call. This uh, now has something similar. I've heard reports that some people have lower mic quality when they're using it to filter their own stuff, but who cares what your friends hear? It lets me filter out their noise and that's what matters. If they have a complaint, they can buy a new Radeon or Nvidia card and filter you out. That's how it should work, right? Not my problem. You got your hotkeys for all your nonsense which again, hurts my head to look at. You can sync in your accounts for, why would I? Okay, I guess, yeah, you could stream on Facebook. I was like, why would I add my Facebook to my graphics driver? AMD Link is a pretty cool thing as well. It lets you, and this is kind of gonna be a trend here, where AMD has a really cool feature that's not as good as something else, but it's all in one place at least. So <laughs> this is the funniest thing to me. I, I, I love this. You've got your AMD link, which lets you either stream your game to a phone, which just use Steam link guys. It's built into Steam. You're launching your games through Steam anyways, and you can launch non-Steam games through Steam, through Steam link if you really wanted to. So whatever, Steam link works great. I don't really, I didn't really notice this being better or worse in any noticeable way. You've also got remote play where your friends can play on your system when you're playing a local multiplayer game, but Steam has remote play. These are features that you use if you just hate games. Well, this is also a feature used if you hate Nvidia users because the remote play only works with fellow AMD users. <laughs> Sorry guys, open source only here. <laughs> like, come on. And it's got a built-in streamer, which again, you could use OBS or, yeah, just OBS, right? Or whatever else you wanna use, which will have more features, but this is easy. This is built in. So you wanna do a quick stream on Twitch to show your friends something. This is the lazy option, why not? And then AMD Link will also let you use your phone and see your performance metrics too, remotely, which is actually pretty cool. Now I don't have to have something up on my second monitor. I can just have my phone here and see what my CPU is at, what my GPU is at temperature wise, utilization wise. It's AMD, so yeah, good luck. I mean, it was telling me my CPU was at 3% utilization while playing Resident Evil 4, which, I mean, that would explain a lot about the optimization, but it's clearly wrong. <laughs> Guys, come on, I'm running an AMD CPU. You know how to talk to these things. A task manager will lie to you, and task manager, I think, is malicious. <laughs> at least on Windows 10, upgrade to 11, or else. No. Another cool feature that, again, I don't know why you would use is Relive VR, which lets you wirelessly do VR. But I mean, again, we're kind of just back to the use the Oculus software or virtual desktop, which I have a video about. So like, well, again, why? Thanks, it's cool, but why? <laughs> why would you use this? You've got your built-in recording stuff. Again, Nvidia has that, what's it called? Like Shadow Player or something like that, which, Again, I didn't know we had on AMD for a while now. Um, like I knew we had the recording, mind you, but we've also got right here, my instant replay, which was something I never thought I would use until I started using it on my Nvidia card. Cause it's really fun when like something ridiculously goofy happens when you're in a game. Like, you know, you're running around and the bot sees an enemy that's spawned in a spot it's not supposed to be at between like you and the 18 meters of concrete. And he just, whips around and blows up the bad guy and you're like, how in the world just happened? Or if you're me and I clip through the floor and just get stuck in the zone or the void. Then you can use your instant replay to just kind of hit your Radeon shortcut, which I think is like Alt-Z or something, and record the last, what, settings here? 300 seconds, up to 1200 seconds, and just save that automatically. The thing is that it actually tells you how much memory it's going to use up while it's doing that. The NVIDIA software, as far as I remember, 
She didn't tell me. It was just like, yeah, here we go. Set it to a minute, whatever. Good luck, bud. And another cool feature that I really appreciate is that it lets me set it to buffer on my system memory and not just my disc. I have 32 gigs of RAM. I've got RAM for days for just regular gaming. I have an SSD though, and just constantly writing four and a half gigs over and over and over and over is killing my poor drive's longevity. These things have limited lifespans. So that's actually a really cool feature and it seems to work okay. You can also save a clip as a GIF. It looks like crap, it's a GIF. It's got like three FPS, it's from 1947. Like just save a video and convert it into a, um, a WebM or something. Windows 11 has a built-in tool for it that's mediocre, but got the job done. You got a little setting menu here for when you're running your performance overlay or whatnot, and it just kind of sets how long it'll pull, how frequently it'll update, all that stuff. You got your general preferences where you can turn on all these little things here and there. Turn off ads, which I did. That's cool. Why do I have ads? I paid for this card, whatever. Well, Gab paid for this card. Somebody did. Oh yeah, you can see a GIF right here. Like it's kind of choppy. It's, it's not having a good time, but you know, it's a feature. Your live stream settings, a scene editor, which is very limited, but hey, it gets the job done, whatever. You got your tuning built in. So this is a, it used to be called Wattman. I think internally it still is. I call it Wattman because I'm old. I don't need MSI Afterburner. I can just go ahead and crank my graphics card in a dumb way built into the setting system. And you can also control your CPU which is neat, I guess. I don't really know what you would do on a Ryzen CPU. I just went into the BIOS and turned PBO to the moon and that's really all you can do. Put your card on rage mode, turn on smart access memory. Now you're cruising. And then you've got your game advisor, which I think is hilarious. So it's telling me my performance grade is marginal for Persona 5, which runs on the Switch and the PS4 and the original one was on the PS3. But again, because it got confused by frame rate and I was doing a bunch of weird testing, it thinks my game runs poorly. You'll get really, really funny recommendations sometimes like hey your 6900 xt is kind of slow would you consider upgrading to a 70 something and you're like i'm playing league of legends man like i have to limit my frame rate or the game glitches <laughs> it's too fast so then what was that last cool feature so there's a funny feature that i really want to enable on my work computer but you know no one wants me to have the keys to anything fun so i can't install it and that's called the uh amd privacy view now you need a webcam uh, most webcams work. My phone running through my computer with Droid Cam X did not work, but this cheap Logitech works just fine. What, what do you mean it's been disabled? Okay, cool, it works. Open up the full settings, please. No, don't launch Persona, no! Stop, they're gonna know I like anime. I just wanted to play the game that's Pokemon, but for adults. <laughs> that's all it is. It's just Pokemon and a JoJo's reference. Don't put that in the video. I'm gonna get murdered in the comments. What AMD Privacy View does is it lets you kind of like obscure your screen to a degree so that your neighbor on the airplane can't see all of your company's secret info or whatever weird crap you're browsing. It's not perfect, so just don't browse weird crap in public, guys. And if your company is that serious, there's, there's actual things you put on the physical screen, that block view, but whatever. It's a cool feature, and I'm probably going to do a dumb video where I end up hating my life using it. And get subscribed and leave a comment if you want to see me play a game with this on, like, you know, pinhole gaming, pretty awful. So you can turn it on, it turns on eye tracking, you can do a quick calibration, general settings, it's got the eye tracking, you can calibrate, like I said, you can change it to do a blur or a dim, how intense you want it to be, what kind of shape you want it to be. It's got present detection, so if you walk away, it goes, hey, there's no one there and locks your screen. So now your boss can't tell you're on Reddit while you're using the bathroom. You see why I want to use this at work? Like, he doesn't care I'm on Reddit, but like, it's the, plausible deniability of it. <laughs> if he can't objectively see me, then it's okay. You'll find that it happens a lot in life, kids. So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. You got privacy view, activate. Okay, so pretending nothing bad happened there, let's just assume it works, it just works. You turn on AMD privacy view, and okay, so it's kind of hard to see, I think, for you guys. Oh, no, you can't see what I'm posting on Reddit. Uh, 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 what can I pull up? YouTube, a coil line. Pull up the coil line. It's a great channel. Get subscribed. Now, this is my home feed. You're going to see I'm into weird military crap and apparently Yoshi. All right, cool. So I don't, again, I'm going to go ahead and crank it up a bit just so it's very obvious what it's doing on video. Because, you know, it's going to get compressed. You're probably watching it on your phone anyway. So like, what are you going to see? But it blurs out everything except for the spot you're looking at, which yeah, it's kind of cool. So I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, hmm. Blur intensity to max and then... So it's pretty obvious now, I hope, that it's only showing the circle I'm looking in. You can change the size if you want. Eh, you know, it's kind of cool. It's a little neat feature that 
three people in the world might use, but I would use it at work, so. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you dim mode, where it just blacks out everything except apparently my taskbar. I guess you kind of need to see that. And the exact little circle I'm looking at. So if you want the, I'm looking at a solar eclipse, but not with my direct eyeballs, like some people uh, experience. Yeah, now this is pod racing. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's go ahead and just get that back there. You've got the present detection, like I said, you've got window selecting where it's supposed to let you like select what window you're looking at with your eyes. I feel like that's gonna screw me up more than anything. <laughs> I've got a very weird workflow. Another cool feature, like, and this is supposed to be good for presentations, I guess. So, hey, look, I'm probably gonna use this in videos like once when I remember, but it'll show you where your eye is actually looking. So like, I'm not moving my head, but mm, I calibrated it off center like an idiot. So, you know, but yeah, look, I'm not moving my head. Ooh, look where I'm looking, right? Oh, where's the subscribe button? Okay, I'm moving my head a little. All right, yeah, okay, so this isn't the software's fault. I calibrated it off center because I'm looking at the camera, my bad. Okay, pretend it's highlighting the get subscribe button, okay, and get subscribed, click the bell. So, at the end of the day, you're gonna keep hearing people till they turn blue in the face about how you buy NVIDIA for the features, but none of the features work if you don't have enough VRAM. Now, you still really can't do a lot of the machine learning AI stuff on AMD hardware, at least in Windows. Um, there's some whole nonsense with their compute software and driver stack that's coming out soon, TM. So if you want to use your local chat GPT knockoff, I think it's called like Llama or whatever, large language, whatever. You want to run any of that stuff offline or your stable diffusion and get yelled at because that is not art. I will fight you in the comments. That's not art. You're typing keywords. Where's your paintbrush? You can't really use it on this as well. There, there's tricks and workarounds, but it's not fun. At the same time though, like what, you're gonna buy a 3060 so you have more than three gigs of VRAM? I'm gonna use this as my daily driver moving forward because I like having VRAM and it's a 6900 XT, it's pretty sick. These cards are cheap right now too. Anyways, hopefully that shows you some features that you didn't know AMD actually offers. There's a ton I didn't know and I used to be an AMD fanboy. Don't be fanboys, buy the best product at the time, which is more than eight gigs of VRAM right now. Take that for what you what you will. Let me know in the comments if there's any other cool features I might have missed or some other nice stuff you can do with AMD that maybe you can't with NVIDIA or the other way around. Let me know in the comments, hop in our Discord, get subscribed and you know, come in for a chat. We'll see y'all next time.